Air Bud is the story of a basketball-playing dog who helps a young boy learn about confidence and teamwork. A dog? Playing basketball? <laughs> I guess you could call him Scotty Puppin. <laughs> He's a regular Snarl Malone. <laughs> um, Charles Barkley. Eh, this isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. Norm Snively and Air Bud are clowns that perform at children's parties. Fernfield could probably benefit from Angie's list because Norm is the shittiest clown ever. And all clowns are shitty, so that's a pretty big claim. He's clumsy and stumbles around a lot, but that's not even part of the act. Like, he's just a goon. The only trick he performs correctly is throwing a ball that Air Bud catches. This is a pretty small town, so I doubt very much that he came recommended by anyone, so how the hell do they find this guy? His big finale is to get hit with a rubber ball and then go absolutely frickin' spastic all over the house. You know, all of this could have been avoided with the ancient art of stop moving. So Norm blames the only competent member of their act for them losing the job and threatens to take Airbud to the pound. You got a dog pound? I got a vicious dog. Now it's a horrible dog. It's a menace! I'm not sure, but do you need to call the pound ahead of time? Can't you just show up? And does he just have the pound's number memorized? And also, how can this guy afford a 90s era car phone? Airbud's crate falls out the back of the truck and it gets immediately hit by Josh Fram and his mom, Jackie. Josh's mom doesn't even notice that there was a dog in the crate and as she's driving away, she hits the damn thing again. <laughs> Women drivers, am I right? The family's moving to Fernfield for a fresh start after Josh's dad died in a horrific test pilot accident. We learn that Josh was really into basketball but lost interest after his dad was sucked into that jet engine. Josh decides to try out for basketball, and of course everyone is shitty as hell to him, especially Larry, the Timberwolves star forward. But, but you know what, Josh? Larry can treat you however he wants because Larry is a winner. The coach decides to make Josh a team manager instead, and it's pretty obvious that Josh is going to end up being some sort of basketball superstar who's going to come off the bench to win the big game. Yikes. Or not. <laughs> well, I did not call that one right at all. Hey boy, come again. Come again. So Josh tosses Airbud the basketball and is crazy excited to find out that this dog can actually play basketball. I mean, he can't dribble or pass the ball or set a pick or shoot a three or really play defense of any kind. But he can kind of hit the ball back to you with his nose. I mean, I could probably do that too, and believe me when I tell you that I suck at basketball. Josh sneaks Airbud into his house, and because no movie can realistically show what it's like to have a dog, Airbud proceeds to trash the ever living shit out of the Fram house. And then the mom just looks at Airbud with comic exasperation. If that was me, you better believe that dog would be out the door right then and there. I once screamed at my dog for like an hour when she knocked over a glass of water. I gotta get these flyers out for the boys who tried out for the team didn't make it. Simmons twins moved to Canada, God knows why. I got two slots open. Two spots open up on the basketball team, and Josh and Airbud practice harder than anyone has ever practiced for anything in the history of ever. Coach almost doesn't let him participate, but it's a good thing he does because Josh is a freaking wizard on the basketball court. That's right, that's right. It was definitely the third pump fake to the right that broke Larry's brain. At the Timberwolves game, Airbud manages to find his way into the court and chaos ensues. Oh, the PG rated chaos. <laughs> So during all this, Airbud manages to knock the ball into the hoop and everyone loses their minds over this basketball playing dog. And I guess I know how they feel. I once saw a duck sneeze and I about lost it. I didn't even know ducks were capable of sneezing. It was the best day. A basketball playing dog. A regular Michael Woof Jordan. <laughs> Michael Woof Jordan? I spent six hours coming up with dog-related names for professional basketball players, and this is the garbage the screenwriters come up with? It doesn't even make any sense. 
Oh, and Coach Barker ends up being an awful human being. All right, so then the school enlists the janitor to be the new head coach. Now, I love finding mistakes in movies, and Air Bud has a huge one that has remained hidden for years. Check out this scene. Did you catch it? Watch it again. You see it? There's no basketball. <laughs> How did no one catch that? Oh, good luck trying to unsee that one. Oh, what? Why are you taking me out? Josh, go on in with Larry. What the hell do you think you're doing? Why are you taking my kid out? Come on, Larry. We're leaving. Dad. Now. So with Larry gone and Air Bud as their mascot, the Timberwolves managed to pull together and make it all the way to the state finals. You know, besides Larry, this team has zero talent, so I can only imagine what kind of a terrible conference the Timberwolves must be in. Of course, all of this is short-lived because good old Norm Snively sees Air Bud on TV and heads to the Frams' house to get him back. Josh immediately goes to Snively's house to steal Air Bud back, only to then let him loose on an island in the hopes that he'll find another owner. Not quite sure how he's going to do that, seeing as how Josh had to take a water taxi to get to this place, which may or may not be a giant garbage dump. Hope you can swim, buddy. Finally, it's time for the state championship game, and in an extreme bit of luck, the Timberwolves have home court advantage. I'm sure it has absolutely nothing to do with the filmmakers being too cheap and lazy to film at a second location. Go down tonight, water boy. Larry plays for the Warriors now. Larry's dad moved the whole family to Spokane just so he could play for the Warriors. <laughs> my dad once begged my coach to not let me play during the championship game. It was the right call, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't sting a little. The Wolves run into trouble when they lose three players. Now, normally this isn't a big deal, but the Wolves only had seven players on the team to begin with. They held two separate trials for this team, and all they could manage were seven players. They need one more player, or else they have to forfeit. So who could they possibly get to play? Uh, the answer is Air Bud. Who else would it be? The whole movie has literally been building to this very conclusion. Oh man, this poor dog has no idea why these humans shoved baby sneakers on his paws. Are they nuts? Dog's a registered member of the team. You check in your rule book. He's right. Ain't no rules that the dog can't play basketball. Logic and common sense say it, but it ain't in the rules. Seeing as how there are about 15 more movies in this series, I'm guessing that Fernfield never gets around to actually closing this loophole. So Airbud manages to make some questionable baskets and helps bring the score to within. Oh my god, he just bit Larry in the dick. Oh, okay, now that is what I would expect from a basketball playing dog. Did the refs not see that? The game comes down to a last second shot and Josh shoots a three and wins the game. Music swells, the crowd goes nuts, and just like Hoosiers, Rudy, and The Natural, this movie ends with a custody battle for a dog. Kinda takes the punch out of that last second shot. And since Fernfield just makes up everything they do as they go, it only makes sense when the judge makes his decision by separating Josh and Snively and seeing which one Buddy goes to. Airbud obviously picks the owner that doesn't beat him every chance he gets, and Buddy and Josh live happily ever after, and... Wait... When was this movie made? 1997. Oh dear. Yeah, the dog who plays Air Bud is surely long dead by now. That's a downer. Well, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.